In other tongues, Mark Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. We give you praise, adoration. Lord, teach us tonight. Reveal secrets to us, even in this evening's class. O oh God of the heavens and the earth, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Teach us tonight, Lord. Reveal secrets to us. Take us deeper, Lord, for your glory. May we live better than the way we came. To you be all glory, majesty and dominion. Unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be glory and honor, majesty and power be ascribed unto your holy name forever. Thou art worthy, O God, to receive glory, honor and power. For thou art created all things. They are and for thy pleasure they were created. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. 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 Walk up to three people and say, I love you, Jesus, much. I love you Jesus much. I love you Jesus much. I love you Jesus much. Say thank you Holy Ghost. Thank you Holy Ghost. All right. So are you ready to hear those say the Lord? Right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So, um, the Lord has been giving us revelations this past week. Several, several, several. Just pouring out, pouring out. Sometimes, what's it just? He say break sometimes. Then he calls us it back. This, he has been giving us se several revelations. Like we have always said, I've never, I don't think successfully I've been able to carry a particular chapter of the Bible to finish. Mm. Because just by reading a line on a verse, I, the Lord can give us 10 revelations out of it, Amen. 10 messages. You know? Amen. And um, we've been going back and forth on which lesson to teach tonight. So, uh, out of several, but he wanted one, us to teach one, which has to do with your finances. Amen. 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 I, I think you like that one. Amen. 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 Something that has to do with your finances, right? You yes. like cash, right? You like cash. You like cash. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we want to discuss that. We were thinking of discussing my mother's womb. Wow. Mm. That's interesting. You know, because your destiny has a lot to do with your mother's womb. Yes. Yes. You know. And a lot of people don't know that. What a, whatever a man becomes in life, mm. even if he's a madman on the street, he started from his mother's womb. Mm. See that? Mm. But uh, we wanted to teach that to them, but, but the Lord said, no. Yeah. We should teach on you and your offering. Amen. Amen. You and your offering. Amen. So that's what we want to discuss tonight. So maybe in our next class, maybe on Wednesday, or as the Lord leads, We'll be able to discuss that. So that sometimes, you know, sometimes some people may be wondering why certain things are the way they are in their lives. Mm -hmm. But 
there's always an origin. Yeah. You know. And that's why we wanted to teach on the mother's womb, but the Lord said, no, let's discuss the finances. Because, you see, God wants to empower you mightily, financially. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we think you need that one. Amen. 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 So that you'll not be doing two jobs. Amen. 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 You'll Amen. not be doing three jobs. Amen. And then at the age of 45, you have white hair. Hey. <laughs> Then you say that is my gene. It's not your gene. It is sofa head. <laughs> it is sofa head. It is hardship. Just that you don't sweat here in America. It is too much cold. Amen. If you come to Nigeria, you know some people. They, they are color. The color of their shirt. Eh? The color. You know. You know what I mean. The color. I don't know about Ghana or everywhere. Are you sure? But in Nigeria, it is always. Brown. Thick brown. That's a destroyer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then this side of the, 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 the sleeves, right? Of the, the hand. Oh and gosh. then the armpits. The armpits. Then they not say it is a uh, deodorant that you use. It's not deodorant, it's <laughs> ashes. <laughs> <It's laughs> <ashes. laughs> there, there was a time they even said that roll on mm -hmm. now causes cancer. I said, really? People stop using roll on. <laughs> not knowing that it was a, a market war. To frustrate, frustrate the green market. On yeah. and people stop using roll up. Yeah. By God, come and see people smelling <laughs> bad yeah. in the buses. You know Molwe buses. Yeah. And meanwhile, you know in the Molwe buses, somebody will just hold the bus and do like this. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, you guys in America, you're enjoying no? Yeah. Coming to America is a relief. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you. Amen. Ha! I'm telling you. By fire, by thunder. <laughs> I recall the day we got our visa. I said, This is visa. I went to put it, tied it inside Lilo. Use rubber band to. I'm telling you. Put it inside the. The carrot and the chopper. The. This, ah. When we got to Lokoja, because I got the visa from Abuja, I passed it. When we got to Lokoja, they said, Everybody calm down, you know. You do stop over to go and eat. I refused to eat. Too. I said, I was playing the bus. They said, The driver said, Get out of the bus. That he will lock the bus. I said, no problem. I said, I will stay. He said, I He chased us out of the bus. Guess what? Even though he locked the bus, I went to stay by the window. I was looking at my bag. <laughs> Visa must not disappear. Visa. Those of you that are born here, thank God. Oh. And those of you who got America lottery, thank God for you. We, we have to I'll be from I'm telling you. Uh, tell you. <laughs> no joke. Visa. Then we will go to Lagos. Went to hide the visa in that one place. Then hiding it again. I said, it will be too grievous for me because I might forget where I kept this visa. <laughs> and then I might go and put it in a place where rats. You know? Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, oh, grace. Yeah. Amen. 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 Say grace. Grace. Amen. grace. Amen. Ah. <laughs> Poverty is a bastard. I you know? It's a disease. It's Amen. It's a disease. And then when coming to America, I'll tell somebody I'm traveling to America. I, I need. They say, why are you going to America? Stay here in Nigeria. <laughs> and those who, who were telling me why are you coming to America, they come to America for holiday. So when I go provoke, I say, oh God, with due respect, please don't no, stop telling me why am I going to America. <laughs> what do you always come to do in America? He said, I'll only just go there and then come back. He said, don't I come back? I said, oh God, let me just even go for the first time. Then I'll decide whether to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyway, your finances. You and your offering. Okay. You see, say it. Say you and your offering. You, you and, and your, your offering. offering. That, that's what God is interested in us discussing tonight. And, and the area I want to look at is, we want to look at, you know, of course, you can't come to this Bible class and not hear things that you have never heard before. And you hear things that will offend your theology. Yes. You can be sure of that. Now, many of you worship in different churches. Many of you worship in different churches. And uh, many people, of course, we said many of you go to different churches. They tell you to give offerings. They tell, they tell you people to give offerings. So you give offerings. You pay tithes. You give this. You give that. You give different things. They say, sow a seed for this project in church. You do. They say, do this. You do that. But yet, it's as though the more you give, the more your life goes down. See? They even say, sow seed so that you can have a husband. For a brother to come and propose to you. 
Meanwhile, it was even married men that were now looking for you. Instead of a brother, a single brother that was supposed to propose to you, it is not even a married man. Happily, happily and heavily married, that is not coming to prove. It's as though your life is, you know, taking a nose dive. So we want to look at why is it that some Christians today, God's children, even though they give and give, they pay tight, they give offerings, they give everything they are supposed to give. Yet Satan is still attacking them seriously. Mm -hmm. Satan is ha having a fit day in their lives. They say, give so that you pass the exam. Mm -hmm. Give so that you you do what? You'll be your business, you get the contract. Give so that you give you will receive promotion. You gave, but nothing still happened. Why? So I want to discuss you and your what? Your offering. Your offering. God doesn't call it finance. God calls it what? Offering. It is man that calls it what? Finance. God never, God never even mentioned the word finance. Alright? Alright? And they even told you, they even told us, they even told us, come to business seminars. They do business seminars. So, your finances. Your finances. Now, we call it finances because it's something many of you are familiar with. But God doesn't call it what? Finances. Now, they even tell you, come to church for business seminars and all that. So, you go to church for business seminars. They organize business seminars. Do this. They tell you, they even call it kingdom finance and all that. Even though you attended all those meetings, you still have not made advances. Even though the business seminar was even held in church, you still did not make progress. Why? Because you see, what many preachers focus on, sad to say pastors, is that they teach more on the offering and don't teach on you. You see, they preach more of what? The offering. They don't discuss who? You. They are even afraid to discuss you because you might stop giving offerings so that they can pay the rent. That's all. They are even afraid to even discuss the offering because even your face alone, say, when you look at the pastor, pastor will have to just behave himself. So that pastor, you know, there are some faces pastor does not like to offend in church. You just look at them and say, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. Pastor, I want to do the pastor will say, no problem. So, God be with you. Have you not noticed? Pastor said, God be with you. You traveled. You had the accident. When you came back, you said, Pastor, I had the accident. Pastor said, how did it happen? How did it happen? Pastor, you are still asking, how did it happen? For Pastor to be asking you, how did it happen? Man, that pastor, is, <laughs> pastor is even rejoicing that you had the accident. So that you can be away from church for a while. <laughs> Don't you know? There are some members that are terrorists to the pastor. <laughs> so to even preach the gospel sometimes, <laughs> it's difficult. But you know, Ozzy is not a pastor. Ozzy is not a pastor. This is not a pastor. So we'll tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. So you and your what? Oh, offering. Friend. You have a lot to do with your offering. And you, you are the one to determine whether the Lord himself will accept your offerings or not. We always think, we have always thought, that the amount we give is what makes the difference. Although that is secondary, but the primary thing is who? You. You and your offering. That's what, to, that's what we want to discuss. So that it will help you position yourself where you ought to be positioned. So that the next time you are giving an offering, you can be sure that it is, it is accepted of the Lord. You can be sure that that offering that you are giving can be accepted of the Lord. Amen. Say mm. what? You and your word. Oh, your offering. Right. See, your offering. The spiritual impact your offering will make in the realm of the spirit is determined by who? Mm -hmm. Why you? Because you are the one giving the offering. And it matters the hands through which the offering is coming from. You see, it is more than just saying, give, 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 give. Who is even the giver? That's the point. Who is the giver? And we're going to show you something 
that many of God's children start to say preachers lose sight of. And we're going to see a pattern in scripture. Which many preachers, if only they can teach it in truth and reality, under the guidance of the Spirit, God's children will prosper. Amen. And like we said, God wants us to prosper here. Amen. Amen. We could have gone into the other lesson, but the Lord said, let's discuss this. Because you see, it, it, we, we have said it before. You can't be part of this fellowship and in three months you have not made progress. If in three months you are not making progress, we'll tell you to go. Don't come here again. If, if after three months you have not made advancement in your life, you keep coming and there is nothing meaningful in your life. By the time you just walk in, we'll tell you, if I will embarrass you, we'll tell you to go. <laughs> Jesus said, any tree, any branch that, might, that does not what? Produce, yes. that does not bear fruit. What does the Father do? <laughs> Cut it off. Yeah. If in three months, three months, you don't make progress, and you're part of us, we're not talking about a satellite member. You know, we have satellite members. Mm -hmm. They come to fellowship. <laughs> Once in a while. No, they have Brother House's phone number. They can call Brother House for prayers when there is a matter. Other matters, they can handle it. You, you get, those are satellite members. No, we're talking about you being consistent here. And we're all growing together. Hearing the same word. And you are not making progress. And in three months, you are still, they even tell you, come and share testimony. You are still saying the same thing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank God. I slept and I woke up. In, that, in fact, will, will chase you away. Don't even, by the time you are doing that, will, Sister Gloria, you just tell the person, shh, shh, please, go, go, go. Don't let Brother Housing hear you. Honestly. A dog slept and woke up that night. A dog slept. Two of us. True. So what do you mean you are taking God? That he, you slept and woke up. A dog slept. And when the dog woke up, he didn't say, I thank God. He did, whoo, 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 whoo. I mean, he didn't thank God. So what are you saying? You see, we, we seem to fool ourselves without confronting issues. Yeah. See, that's the point. Yeah. We deceive ourselves a lot. Yeah. And we, sometimes we think that we can use testimony to pass time. You know, we think testimony is part of the program. Mm. Yeah. It's not true. You and your what? Your offering. offering. You have a part to play. Your progress in life, your financial advancement in life is not based on your job. You know, many years ago, my, my pastor that trained me in ministry said something. He said, as long as you are being paid salary, you can never be rich. Mm -hmm. I've never forgotten it. He said, as long as somebody pays you, yes. you can never be rich. You know why? Because that person determines your future. Yes. He determines your destiny. Yes. And if he's angry... <laughs> <laughs> your children cannot eat McDonald's, or they cannot eat. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the truth. That's that means rent cannot be paid. That's true. One man, one funny fellow, a neighbor, sitting to determine. Do you know what Abigail said to Dave, uh, David? She said, Neban is my husband's name. Foolishness is the meaning of the name. Imagine if you have a neighbor for a boss. Imagine if you have a neighbor for a boss. And then you are coming to say, Kuri Mama, Kuri Mama, Kuri Mama, what kind of Kuri Mama are you doing? Kuri Mama. You, you are coming to do it here instead of you to do it at your job. You and your offering. Now listen, as a Christian, no matter where you walk, listen carefully, no matter where you walk, God sent you there to go and walk. You know what? Now you are saying amen. Before you say amen, let's finish first before, before you say amen. God sent you there to walk. And the kind of boss you will be under, the kind of superior you have mm -hmm. is an indication of your relationship with the Lord. Yeah, okay. And it is based on the condition of the kind of person you are. Mm. The Bible says to the merciful, God will do what? Show so himself mercy. mercy. Yeah. To the forward, he will do what? He will so show himself. Yeah. So if you find yourself under a wicked boss, it means that you are wicked before the Lord. Mm. That's why he will send you there to go and walk. Mm. You attracted your kind. Now, there are some people who say, "Why are these things happening to me?" No, no, no. It's not. A, it's not. It's not a mistake. The Bible says, "For we know that all things do what work to together for good. good to do what to them that who that love God." Does everybody love God? No. No. We all say it. You see, first of all, if you listen to the writings of John, John said, "Anyone who says he loves God but do it." evil. He said the love of the father is it's not in, in him. him. He didn't say he does not love God. He loves God but it's the love of the father in him. There are two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can say you love God but the question is is the love of the father in you? 
So who are you? See, your person determines your relationship. And it determines your future. So we want to look at what? You and your what? Your offering. Because you see, you can't keep paying tight in your church and not make progress. You can't keep giving in your church or in anything that pertains to the things of the Holy Ghost and not make progress. You can't. Faithfulness is not a proof of advancement. Faithfulness, faithfulness, even though it gives you promotion, it does not mean that you have advanced. You see, it? you can be faithful and, be, and still be miserable. So the question is, is why are Christians today not making advancements financially? I want to tell you why. Now, if you know, by the time we are done, we are not going. We are, you will not hear us say, "Come and give special offering." We are not going to tell you that. You yourself, you sit down and analyze your own life. Because you can still come out and give special offering. And you still be where you are. You see the point? And it's sad that many ministers don't tell God's people the truth. Because again, maybe they themselves don't even know it. To teach it. See, they had a... Isn't it amazing? You have, what you have today happening in churches. You have pastors today who early in the morning on Sunday morning. Turn on TV and watch your own pastor. Maybe Joy lost it. Or maybe can a couple and say, ah, that's a revelation. I'm going to teach it today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me this revelation. Yeah. I'm coming to preach it today. I'm coming to preach it. What, do you, what are you coming to preach? You are preaching another man's revelation. revelation. He's preaching to a people. He has a congregation. Yeah. Even though there is, you are watching him on TV. Who are your people? Who are your people? It's sad. Because for everyone God calls, God gives him a message to a yeah. people. Yeah. Who have the Lord given you? What message did he give you? Oh, I watched Kenneth Copla. <laughs> on TBN. Okay. You should go and live in Nigeria. So that when Nepa takes light, you will know whether you receive revelations or not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 4. Let's see something about offering. The first time we were introduced to offerings was in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. And you find the story of Cain and Abel. There. That want to look at. You know, we seem to focus on the killing of Abel by who? By Cain. Oh. But we don't seem to look at the nitty gritties of it, the realities of it. And then one of the mistakes again we make is that we don't seem to understand God's language. You see, there's a way God talks, and God does not talk carelessly. God is not a careless talker. God does not talk carelessly. See, see, why? Because in the realm of the spirit, you mean what you say, and you say exactly what you mean. Amen. You just don't talk. In the realm of the spirit, people just don't talk. The Bible says you cannot say in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 6. It says you cannot say this and say, no, oh, sorry, I meant this. The Bible says that, will, what, that is what will provoke God. And God himself will be the one to destroy your works. God. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 6. He says, don't say this and say, no, no, I, I didn't mean that. This is what I meant. The, the Bible says that is what will provoke the Lord, and the Lord will destroy all your works. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. He does say it. And the Lord said, the reason why you should not say this and say, oh no, that's not what I meant. He said, because of the angels. He said, because this will provoke the Lord. Because you see, God never made the angels after his own image and likeness. God made you after his own image and likeness. So when you talk that way, you are trying to let the angels think that God is that way. And the Bible says that is what will provoke the Lord. And then the Lord will say, he will destroy you. God himself will be the one to attack you. Amen. Amen. So let's see something. God does not talk carelessly. So want to what you, you see some of you, you you speed read because you use iPad. You speed read because you use a newer version of the Bible. No, 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 no. Let's not speed read. Even if you are using iPad. Amen. Amen. And some of you you have to, you have become very fashionable to carry a Bible. You know. You have become very, very fashionable. Our Bible is too big now. Bible is too big. Hmm. Okay. Why we too big to carry? <laughs> Amen. Thank God for iPads. Amen. 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 You are offended now. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Genesis chapter four. Someone said, I, just, I, I, I like the message brother Ozzy preached, but I just don't like him sometimes. He likes to attack me. Who is attacking you? <laughs> Who is attacking you? Genesis chapter four. 
Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Right? And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Now, what does it mean to know? He had intercourse with his wife, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the word know there, or knew, if you read other versions, if, sorry, not other versions, if you read other accounts, you will see where the Bible will say he laid with her. Right? Not Adam now. But there are different stories where you, you will see that the Spirit of the Lord will say the man knew his wife. Or he will say this person laid with her. You see those? Now, when the Bible, when each time you read the Bible and you see the expression he laid with her, it meant that it, that was not a godly thing to do. But when he says he knew, it meant that it was his right, right? And it was the right thing to do. So Adam, all the while Eve was with him, never knew his wife in the area of having intercourse with her. So now in Genesis chapter 4, after the fall, the Bible says Adam knew his wife. And guess what? And she did what? And she, conceived. she conceived, right? Mm -hmm. She conceived. Now, the question is, was the woman supposed to conceive? No. A woman was never supposed to conceive. When you read Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, the Bible says, when God made Adam, Adam was both male and female. And the Bible says, God blessed him. God blessed him, right? The Bible says, God blessed them. But it was only Adam that was created at that time. He was both male and female. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, right? Yes. And all that. Have dominion, subdue the earth. True of us. True. Genesis chapter 1, verses 28. True of us. True. True. So, Adam went, the Bible says God formed the dust out of the ground and made the man. Mm -hmm. And Adam, and God planted the garden. And Adam was going about doing his business, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says the Lord himself now said it is not good for the man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say it is not good for the man mm -hmm. to be lonely. Because Adam was not lonely. He said it is not good for the man to be what? Alone. alone. Adam was not lonely because he had a friend. God was his friend. Yes. He was what? Alone. Mm -hmm. To be alone means you don't have somebody to walk with you. Like now in our fellowship, we have assistants working with Brother Ossie. Mm -hmm. So Brother Ossie is not alone. See it? But it's not as if Brother Ossie is lonely. Alright? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the point. That's even the purpose of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. That's another subject. But how did God make the woman? The Bible says God caused the man to, to do what? Fall like to fall into a deep sleep. Right? And then he did what? He took, took the rib, right? Yes. And formed Amen. the woman, right? Mm -hmm. And then woke the guy up, brought the lady. Adam now said, she shall be my wife. God never said she was a wife to him. Yeah. And God never objected. Because the Lord said anything Adam called, it was so. True of us. True. True. Now, if the woman... Listen carefully. If the woman was taken from the man to be made, what does that tell you about children? It means that children were to be brought forth from Adam. Mm. Sex was never in the picture. Adam was supposed to be bringing out children from him. Just like the way Eve was brought out of Adam. Adam was made in the image and likeness okay. of God. Mm. He was a creator the way God is. So Adam was supposed to be creating babies. That was the divine placement God gave Adam. So sex was never the picture. The first person who introduced sex to the family was Satan. Right. Satan defied Eve. That's how Cain was born. Because the Bible does call Cain the child of the evil one. Because Satan, the serpent, Satan through the serpent, defied Eve. Now, we we'll see in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1, another did what? Knew his wife. And the, the woman did what? The woman conceived. conceived. Right? And then, what did she now say? And bear came. And bear who? Cain. Answer are you offended? And bear who? And bear Cain. Are you offended? And bear who? Cain. Cain. Right? Mm -hmm. And what did she now say? I have gotten a man. I have gotten a man from where? From, from the, the Lord. Lord. How? How? How did she get him from the Lord? It's a biological process. If a man sleeps with a woman, will he not have a child? Yeah. Yeah. Was it the Lord who gave you? Results of the Oh, you are surprised. 
Oh, I, I get okay now. You're surprised, right? Mm. Oh, we got you now. Okay, I know you will quote Proverbs. Children are the heritage from God, right? Mm. Yes. True of us. No, True. Stop, stop looking at us like that. <laughs> <laughs> you are widening your eyes now. You are not talking. <laughs> <laughs> Children are what? The heritage, the heritage of, of the Lord, Lord. right? Yes. True of us. True. True. So you think that every child is from God. Is that what you think? Because children are the heritage of God. Do you also know that Satan has gives children too? Yeah. So uh, is it from God too? No. No. The Bible says the angels in Genesis chapter 6 saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Came down and married them. And they had children for them. Was it from the Lord? No. Yeah. It was a biological process. The Bible says they knew the women. They, they slept with the women. Because they were married to them. Angels. Took up human form. Married women. Dwelt with them. Had children for them. Will you call that from the Lord? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. She said now, for I've gotten what? A man from where? From, from who? From the Lord, right? Now we'll get to see whether that man is from the Lord. Where is God? Above, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. True of us. God is what? Above. Above. What did Jesus say? He said every good and precious gift comes from where? Above. Above, Above right? Mm -hmm. Now, if Eve says she got who? Came from where? Above. From, from, the, from, from, from the, the Lord. Lord. It meant that she got him from where? Above. From above, right? Mm -hmm. Now, was Cain a good gift? No. no. But she said so. Yeah. So that was what she said. We mm. were not told that that was what the Spirit of the Lord confirmed. Mm. She said it. It was recorded. Don't forget, the person who wrote the book of Genesis was Moses. Moses was not there. It was what the Spirit of the Lord told Moses to write mm. that Moses wrote. Right? Yes. yes. And so the Spirit of the Lord was reporting this matter to Moses, who was writing it. Mm. That she said, see, for she said. So the, Lord, the angel of the Lord said, she said. So Moses wrote it. She said. But was it, was, was it truly from the Lord? No. Have you forgotten how some of you got your jobs? How you, <laughs> you, you manipulated your, this and you got the job. And then you came. <laughs> Does anybody have a testimony? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise. Master Jesus, praise! The Lord is good. The Lord is good all the time, all the time. So I want to thank God for six months. I've been without job. <laughs> Everybody say, hey. so I just forwarded an application. My mind was telling me to do this. So, so I just did this. I just did that. What did you do? You did not tell us what you did, but you only you knew what you did. Uh, we're not, we not even interested. Thank God it's a beautiful testimony. <laughs> Just like Eve. Eve now, if she wants to then share her testimony, she say, praise the Lord! God gave, God gave me a child, oh! Mm -hmm. Amen, oh! Amen. Amen. Have you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what has this got to do with your offering? You get to see it now. Who are you? That's the point. Who are you? Jesus said, A man, a good man, out of the good treasures of the heart, bringeth forth what? Good things. Then it is an evil man, out of the evil treasure. He still calls it evil, he still calls it treasures. He says, An evil man, out of the evil treasures from the heart, he bringeth forth what? Evil things. He still calls what the evil man brings forth treasure. Why? Because that is what a, an evil man values. Yes. Now, just because the evil man places value on anything he calls a treasure, doesn't mean that we, or God himself, calls it a treasure. And Adam knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the ground. Now, notice she never said anything about Abel. How she got Abel. You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that would tell you something about the kind of person Eve was. Because already, already by this time, she has already been defied. Mm -hmm. So her wisdom was corrupted. Mm -hmm. Favoritism. She was bringing favoritism. She, she called Cain a child from the Lord. Yeah. But she never called Abel a child from the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
What does that tell you? Favoritism. And families do that. Yes. Where a mother prefers one child to the other. Yes. The husband says, this is my child. This other one, I have no business with you. And this morning, go and meet your mother. This one is my child. Favoritism. Eve started it. And she bare, she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now notice, each of them had a responsibility. One was a keeper of the sheep, the other was what? A, keep, a tiller of the ground. So Cain took after his, his father, in quote, who? Adam. Right? But Adam was not even a tiller of the ground. Adam was not a tiller of the ground. Adam was a dresser of a garden. Right. Adam didn't have to till. <laughs> he didn't have to work hard, really. Yeah, that's true. The Bible only told him to cultivate, right? Mm -hmm. And then to dress the garden. That was what the Lord told him to do. True of us. True. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. When Adam fell, when Adam fell, what did the Lord say? He said, Cause is the ground for your sake, right? Mm -hmm. He said, sweat and teeth, I'm um, sorry, tongues and teeth shall it produce, right? Mm -hmm. And then he says what? You shall do what? Till the ground before you can even eat, right? Mm -hmm. But when you read the Bible, Adam never tilled the ground. It was Cain who did it. Adam never did. There was no place ever written in scripture that Adam tilled the ground for once. Adam knew the ground was caused. Mm -hmm. The person, but that cause was later reversed in Genesis chapter 6. Where God said he will no longer cause the ground after yeah. the waters of Noah. Yeah. God reversed the course, right? Mm -hmm. But until then, Adam did, never went into tilling of the ground. Because the ground was caused for his sake. Now, Cain, listen carefully, Cain, who was not there when the ground was caused for his father's sake, started tilling the ground. And God, out of his sheer mercy, prospered Cain. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. but guess what? The same mistake, not exactly the same, but the mistake the father made was going to be transferred to him. He also made the mistake. Remember, when we looked at the crying blood in our last class, right? Mm -hmm. He killed who? He it's killed who? Abel. 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 What did the Lord say? What, what did the Lord say to the ground again? He said, he said, your brother's blood is, is crying out from what? From the ground. Because the ground has received what? His blood from thy hands. And then what did the Lord say? He said, cause is the what? The, the earth. God caused it again. What did Cain do? Cain stopped stealing the ground. He did what? He started building cities. <laughs> started building cities. You see that? Are you following this? Yes. Let's give you a counsel here. If you have been doing a particular business and that thing has not been working for you, there's need for you to do an assessment here yeah. of yourself. Hmm. Must you be a nurse? Must you be a nurse? <laughs> is it that this? <laughs> is it that it is a course you must be a nurse? Once you come to America, you must be a nurse. Mm. Must you be a nurse? No. Must you be an APA, CNA, <laughs> CNA, MSNBC? Yes, <laughs> must you be? Is, no, is there no other thing again that you can do? <laughs> Cain was smart though. Mm -hmm. Adam was smart. Adam knew the ground was caused. He stopped it. After all, there was so much fruit in the garden, right? Yeah. Although he was chased out of the garden, right? Now, that garden, if you look at it very well, the Bible says, so God drove who? Man out of the garden. Mm -hmm. Really, did God chase, drove, drive man out of the garden? God didn't. Go and listen to our lesson on the garden of Eden. Where was the garden? The earth is the garden. Right. Still here. The Eden was what? The Eden was heaven. Heaven, yes. heaven. Heaven, heaven was here on earth. Yes. Because the tree of life today that is in heaven is the same tree of life Adam used to. Yes. So the garden of Eden is still there. So Adam was there. There was so much fruit everywhere. So he didn't he didn't, he didn't, he didn't see any need for tilling the ground. Don't forget, he was a blessed man. Mm -hmm. He was a blessed man. Now I want to show you something. Listen, if you have been trying one thing over and over again, you are not getting it. Leave that thing alone. Try something else. 
It could be you are the king and the ground has been cursed. So go and start building cities. Leave ground alone. Leave tilling of the ground. We're telling you this thing. You see, it sounds funny. If you have been writing a PNOS, uh, 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 what do they call it? License. You have been writing, you are not passing. Leave it alone. Go and do teacher. Go and be a teacher. Go and be a teacher. If teaching is not going, come and join us in the fellowship and be a preacher. <laughs> that one it must prosper. We know it. it. So, <laughs> Ali, Abi, we will attach you to Pastor Ed. So that Pastor Ed is a bishop. What do you do, No. So you say, Brother, you are this FBA. But there's a point we want to show you. You are your what? Your offering. And she again bare, let's start from verse 1 again. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother, Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, now, mark that expression, in the process of time, in the process of time, we'll come to that. Because, you see, don't be an iPad Christian, speed reading your Bible. In the process of time, mark that expression, in the world, in the process of time, Genesis chapter 4, right? He says what? In the process of what? Time. Genesis chapter 4 verses what? Verses 3, right? He said in the what? In the process of what? Time. What does he mean by in the process of time? In a period. So which means that Cain and Abel were not born as adults. They were born as babies. They grew to becoming adults. You see it? Adam and Eve were, were, made, were made as adults. Adam was never born by a woman. Adam was never born. That was why John the Baptist could, was not greater than Adam and Eve. Jesus said, of all born of women, there was none greater than John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was greater than Moses, but he was not greater than Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve were never born by a man, by a woman. See, God made Adam as an adult. God made Eve as what? Well, an adult. Adam never knew anything about childhood. He never grew up as a child. Adam doesn't know what nine months mean. You get the point? But Cain and Abel were born. Now, the reason why the Lord began by telling us that Adam knew his wife was to tell you a biological process that was already in motion. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. It was a fall that initiated it. Like we said earlier, sex was not the medium through which babies were going to be brought forth. Not through sex. Adam was to be a creator. To create babies. Because everything... To replenish the earth was in him. He was to bring it out and make. Bring it out and make. Adam is not a name. I hope you know. Adam is not a name. Adam means, Adam is a description. Adam means the mankind of God. He is the mankind of God. So he was a creator. Who introduced Adam to sex? Have you ever thought of it? Did God tell Adam, go and sleep with your wife? It was the fall. The Bible says his, their eyes were both open. So they did what? They realized they were what? Naked. <laughs> and Ashe. Who introduced Adam to sex? He did not. <laughs> in the process of time, mark that expression. In the process of time, in the process of time, it came to pass. That came brought forth the fruit of the ground, right? An offering unto the Lord. It says, in the process of time, it came to pass. Which means that this was not the this this story we are about to read was not the first time Cain and Abel brought an offering to the Lord. Cain has been bringing an offering to the Lord. That's why I said, in the process of time, he grew up doing this. So, Cain was actually the first person to be giving God offering, even before Abel was born, his younger brother. So, Abel knew it too, and they were both giving offerings. So, don't think that this was the first offering Cain and Abel gave, and this was what happened. No, they have been giving it before. You get to see they have been giving it before. We're discussing what? You and your offering. Because, you see, you can't keep giving an offering, and you are not making progress. The problem is not the offering. The problem is who? You. You. And it's not even your job, not the economy. It is you. He 
He says, and in the process of time, it came to pass, verse 3, that came brought forth, that came brought the that came brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, his, and Abel, he also, let's take it again. In the process of time, it came to pass, that came brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the what? First slaves. First born of his flocks. And of the fat thereof. Now, the word there of the first means it was the best. The firstborn and the best. But the Bible says for that okay, he brought an offering unto the Lord. Mm. Not the best. Now, listen. Because they see it as the first there, for that of Abel, they think that Cain brought rotten yams, rotten tomatoes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Potatoes that are mashy. Or, or less. You know, those kind of things. Those are one dollar <laughs> <laughs> groceries. Mm. Uh -huh. Vegetables, the cucumbers that were beginning to wither away. Very good. They think those are the things came. No, 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 that's not it. It was a first food offering here. If you notice, it was called for that of Cain, first food. It was called first food. Why for that of Abel, it was called what? First slings. So it was a particular type of offering. That was the first offering ever introduced to mankind. The first fruit offering, even before tithe came. The first person to pay tithe was Abraham. That was in Genesis chapter 14. You see it? Genesis chapter 14. But this time around, in Genesis chapter 4, we were introduced to the first fruit offering, which a lot of Christians today find difficult to give. But the point is that Cain... Was, his was called what? A first fruit offering. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he was a farmer. That of Abel was called what? Yes, first first And what? Lead. And the best of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Why was it the best? Because it was the firstborn. And remember, in, Je in Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, the Lord said, every firstborn belongs to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of animal and what? Man. Right. Now, something we need to say about animal. Most of you, you have pets. Most of you, you, don't, you maltreat your pets. You don't take care of your pets. And do you know God will judge you for that? Yeah. You don't know. You have a pet in your house and you don't take care of that pet. It's not just, some of you, you think it's an American thing. It's not an American thing, no. it's a Bible thing. No. Even if you have a ram in your house, a pet, maybe a cat, maybe a ram, maybe a shawawa, maybe, a, what do you call it? Chihuahua. Whatever. Anything. Whatever, it's snake. As long as you have brought it to your house, take care of it. And the Bible says the firstborn of that animal belongs to the Lord. Mm. You say you want to have a pet. So you must be willing to follow it the Bible way. One day we'll take a class on that. Then you you think again whether you want to have a pet in your house. <laughs> That's Shawawa. <laughs> but I feel he has one in his house. <laughs> That's the first time I was seeing a shower when we came to Brafelli's <laughs> Hey, what do we call it? Yeah. Oh, we call it Shawawa. <laughs> the first time I heard it, I said, was it Shawama? Shawama is something they eat, though. <laughs> Shawama. Okay. They're teaching us, right? Yeah. Amen. All right, so let's see. Let's see Shawawa here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, see something, please. See something. A neighbor, he also brought of the... Verse 3 again. And, Cain in the, and in the process of time that Cain brought in the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord, and Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock. So Cain was supposed to bring, bring a first fruit, he brought an offering. Instead of a first fruit offering, he brought a general offering. But Abel knew exactly the offering the Lord required at that time. Which was what? The firstborn offering. And Abel, he also brought of the first lean of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord, now look at the next line. And the Lord had what? Respect. Had respect. Unto who? Abel. Unto Abel. And what? Unto his offering. Read it again. And the Lord had what? Respect. respect. Unto, unto who? Abel. 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 And unto what? And unto his offering. Again. And the Lord had what? Respect. respect. Unto who? Abel. Unto Abel. And unto what? His offering. Now, did you notice the Lord did not say... And the Lord had respect unto the offering of Abel. Did he say so? 
Is, is that in your Bible? Answer now. Is that in your Bible? No, he said the Lord had respect unto who? Unto Abel. Be, before what? Before his offering. That's where we got the lesson from. You and your offering. It begins with you before the offering. It begins with you first. The Lord had respect unto who? Abel first. When you... Lord had what? Respect unto who? Abel. The first thing there, notice, the respect was to who first? Abel. Before what? His offering. That's where it begins from. It begins with who? You. Before what? The offering. Who is bringing the offering? Who is bringing the offering? You see, we always think that God's concern is on the offering. No. God's concern is on who? You first. Before the offering. So, you see, where do you stand with the law before you bring the offering? You see why the Bible does tell us, do not be deceived, for God is no more. He said, whatsoever you sow, you will reap. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. He says, he that soweth sparingly shall do what? Reap sparingly. Now, why would a man sow sparingly? Because that is who he is. Not necessarily the offering. Why would a man sow bountifully? Because that is who he is. But then, before we even talk about the giving, let's talk about you. Who are you? The Lord had respect. So God himself can respect a man. You see the point? Yes. God can respect a man. Yes. God can respect a woman. But you yourself, you can't really tell whether God respects you. Mm. Is it not amazing? God will come to somebody like Moses and he will be seeking his opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Moses had to be telling God, God, you better repent. God will, <laughs> Moses, telling God to repent. Moses queried God for doing evil. Moses said, you better repent from this evil. Moses could say that to the Lord, to repent from an evil. Because God wanted to destroy the children of Israel for building the golden calf. And Moses was telling the Lord, Lord, repent from that evil. Moses. Hmm. Moses. What gave Moses the audacity to do that? Hmm. And Moses didn't even know. He was with the Lord on the mountain. And the Lord reported the matter to Moses. Right? Mm -hmm. And Moses said, Lord, don't be angry. I'm coming down. God said, Moses, you know what? I will kill these people. I will finish them. I will destroy them. I will... will, In fact, you know what, Moses? I'm going to raise a generation from you. A new lineage from you. I will prosper you. What did Moses say? God said, Moses said, God, stop this thing. Moses. He said, God, stop it. He said, God, listen. If you kill these people, what do you want the Egyptians to say? They'll say that because of mischief. They don't love them. He was telling God, he said, God, you'll be very mischievous to do that. Moses. First of all, what will make, didn't God know that Moses was going to insult him with that? No, God had respect for Moses. He felt that Moses was somebody he could talk to. Amen. Most of you, 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 you hear us say, sometimes we say, Lord, <laughs> I don't want to hear this thing. And the Lord said, come Moses, I want to tell you something. Now, relationship. Relationship. It is you first. Who are you? Remember the demons asked, the demoniac he asked. He said, What? Jesus I know. Paul I know. He said, But what? Who are you? And, and these were believers. That's the amazing thing. They were believers. Remember, we saw that, right? Why? But because they were involved in voodoo. Listen, 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 listen. You can't send money to your family member in the village. Because they said there is one man of God they want to meet. The man of God says, You send an offering. You don't know who this man of God is. You don't know where he stands in the spirit with the Lord. You send an offering. To the man of God that you have never met. And then you still come to church to see you want to give an offering. See that? The God you are looking for in the village, the God is inside of you. You cannot trust the God inside of you. You are trusting a God in a man of God in the village that you have never met. So you are a satellite member of a shrine in the village. Indirectly, because you sent money home mm. and your money represents you. No, notice, he says, The Lord had respect unto who? Abel. Unto Abel. Abel and what? His, his offering. offering. Now, let's see the next line. What did the Lord say? But unto Cain. He said, But unto Cain. What did he say? To his offering. And to his offering. He said, But unto Cain. But unto Cain and to his offering. So God knew Cain brought an offering. But God said, No, Cain, I can't respect this. I don't expect this from you. Now, a man. That you choose not to respect. A woman. 
that you choose not to respect means that the person was someone you once respected. It must mean that there is something about a relationship here. Mm -hmm. Because you can only respect or disrespect someone you have relationship with once. True or false? Yeah. So what happened to the relationship? He said, for unto the offering of K, he had no respect. But the Lord had respect to who? To K. Before he even talked about the offering, he talked about who? K. Then he talked about Abel. He said to Abel, he had reward, respect to Abel before what? His offering. So, when they tell you, sister, why don't you come to church? You say, no, it's my job. Pastor, you know it's my job. Oh, brother, you know it's my job. Anyway, I'll be sending my tithe. I'll be sending my tithe. Is it the tithe? No. I'll be mailing my tithe. Give, please give me the fellowship account. <laughs> I'll be mailing my tithe. Stupid. And sad to say, pastors even encourage members. Okay, whereas you can send your tithe, you can mail it. So they go and make envelopes and give it to members. If you cannot come to church, mail your tithe. <laughs> Hold it, pastor. Of course, he needs it. He needs the cash, really. So that he can pay the, the bills. He has to pay the bills. So they even preach today. They say, well, you know, if you cannot come, your money represents you. Mm. Money represents you. Money represents you. Who made, now, cash now, right? We know money is an angel, but cash now, that's what we mean. They say, the money represents you. They mean cash. Cash. Who made cash? Man. Who made cash? Man. Was it God or man? man? Answer now, who made cash? Man. So now, how can cash, something that you made, represent you? But they say God had respect unto who? Unto Abel. And to what? To his offering. But to the offerings of Cain. Cain. To Cain first, he said. And to his offering, he had no respect. See something now. See something. But unto Cain, verses 5, and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. You see that? So you can actually see why God himself didn't even respect this guy. He says, he was very what? Right. Wrought. Not angry. Anger is not the same thing as wrought. Please don't mistake wrought for anger. And wrought, to be, to, be, to be full of wrought means that you are offended. You are full of offense. Mm -hmm. Offense. And offense begins, the Bible says, be angry and do what? Sin not. He says, do not let the sun go down what? on your anger. So when the sun goes down on your anger, that's wrought. It becomes an offense. And that's what becomes sin. I think it was Sister Nelly that was talking to us about that the last time. Amen. And we, we, we had to explain that the last time. But the fact still remains that it says Cain was doing what? Was very rough. So which means that Cain sat throughout the day. And he was sad. Till the sun went down. So from anger, he became what? Rot. Rot. And the Bible says his countenance did what? Fail. So you could see it all in him. Why would Cain be angry if this was the first time he was giving God this offering? You see it? Why would Cain be angry? If this was the first time, he shouldn't have been angry. He shouldn't. It means this was not even the first time he was giving God this offering. This was not the first time he was giving God this offering. And this time around, he felt that it should be according to his own terms. But there was a particular offering the Lord wanted. Which was what? The first fruit offering. Cain wanted to give God a general offering. So, as far as he was concerned, it should be according to his terms. Not according to God's terms. That's how you do it. You always want to do it according to your own terms. Not according to how God wants it. So, you hear some people say, you know, I, I, I scatter my tithe. <laughs> you scatter your tithe. That's why you are living a scattered life. Can't you see? You scatter your tithe. You give, you say, I, I, I give my tithe, I help the poor. Did God say you should give tithe to the poor? Did God ever say anything like that? No. He said, bring... The tithe and offering to where? Like My storehouse. storehouse. You say you are going to help the poor. Okay, there is a poor in the storehouse. Bring it. No, I don't. you just don't want pastor to touch it. Meanwhile, tithe does not even belong to pastor. Listen, let's tell you something. When you give an offering, you give an offering to a spirit. You don't give an offering to a man. As long as it is called offering, it is given to a spirit. You can only give a gift to a man. 
You only give an offering to his spirit. Either in the kingdom of light or in the kingdom of darkness. Somebody say, but who is still going to spend it? It is the pastor. The same way to a native doctor is still going to spend the cash. True or false? True. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. Now look at the next line. And the Lord said, unto who? Cain. Unto who? Cain. Unto Cain. Listen. When you read this story, you will never read where God spoke to Cain until this time. God did not even speak to Abel. Throughout the life of Abel, God never spoke to Abel. Did you ever read it that God spoke to Abel? He never did. Even when Abel died, God only reported the matter to Cain okay. to say, Your brother's blood is doing what? Crying from the ground. He didn't say he was crying unto God. Mm -hmm. He said he was crying from the ground. Now, Cain, God spoke to him. Is it not amazing? In the state of his, of his fall, God came to talk to him. Mm -hmm. So which means God does not desire the downfall of any of his child. Mm -hmm. So why do you always think that God is against you? Whereas you are your, the one against yourself. You are the cause of your problem. You always think that God is the one against you. Look at it. The Bible says, and the Lord did what? Spake yeah, unto King. Okay. All this why God never spoke. God only made a choice. God reacted. He responded and reacted. He responded to the person of Cain. He had respect for him. Now, I can respect you without speaking to you. True of us. Mm -hmm. But for the first time, God was going to speak. The last time God ever spoke to that family was when God queried what Adam and Eve did. The next time God was going to speak again, he was speaking at the fall of Cain. Speaking at the fall of Cain. Why is it that in your life, the only time you hear a prophet comes to tell you, don't say the Lord is when you do wrong? Aren't you tired of it? Mm. Then you expect to give God an offering and you expect God to collect it. Mm. You should be ashamed of yourself. That every time the pastor comes and says, I'm seeing some things in your life, the Lord says you should make adjustments. Why is it that it's you? Just know that if a man of God comes to you to even address you that way, the offering you just give, just know the Lord did not collect it. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are thou wrought? Why are you angry? Why are you offended? And why is thy countenance do what? Falling. Now, listen, 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 listen. Even though Adam fell, the Bible never told us Adam was angry. The Bible never told us Adam was ever angry. Read it. The Bible never told us Adam was ever angry. Adam, was, Adam never had a problem, as far as he was concerned. He, Adam never told God he was ever sorry. He never saw himself as one who had a problem. He never told God he was angry and he was sorry. He never expressed anger. Even after the fall. Even when the Lord caused the ground for his sake, the Bible never told us Adam was offended in any way. The first time we are introduced to offense was in the character of who? Cain. Now, the Bible does tell us Adam knew his wife and she conceived and had a son called who? Okay. And she claimed that it was a child from the Lord. So where did the anger come from? If the child was from the Lord. Again, that will let you know that Cain was not actually not the child of Adam. Cain was the child of Satan. And God wanted to help him. He was the child of Satan. You can read that in 1 John chapter 3 verses 12 on your own. But he was the child of Satan. Now notice something. Notice something. You and your offering. Amen. You and your offering. Say, say you and your offering. You you now, where did Cain get the anger from? Of course, Satan. Because Satan has always been angry with the Lord. Because he felt that the Lord cheated him. And God honored Satan. God called Satan what? The son of the morning. So Satan was seen as a son to God. God saw Satan, Lucifer now. Before he became Satan. God never called him Satan anyway. God named him who? Lucifer. The son of the morning. God called Lucifer his son. That's to tell you how God honored him. 
That's how God liked him. That, that was a demonstration of God's affection for Lucifer. He called him a son. Called him a son. He said, son of the money. God made him and called him the son of the money. And then he, he abused the privilege God gave him. Like many of you do too. See, your brother sent you to school. You went to school. Now that you have graduated, now your brother cannot talk to you anymore. You can't even remember the last time you helped. Even your brother, your sister who brought you to America, you can't talk to her anyhow. You, you now call yourself a citizen. Who gave you the citizenship? Your sister who brought you to America. Now you can look at her in the eye. You are operating with the spirit of Lucifer. Even if you are born again. You are a Lucifer in a human form. Even though you bear that family name. And if anybody is wise, they should not marry you. <coughs> That's just the truth. But the point is this. Lucifer was angry because the law brought him down. Lucifer used to be in charge of the earth. He was God's vice regent here. Listen, something, you know, many of us, your theology has been messed up. By so many preachers. They used to tell you Lucifer was leading any choir, was leading choir in heaven. Lucifer never led any choir in heaven. He there were, which choir? He never led any choir. The Bible called him the anointed cherub. And the Bible says he had musical pipes in him. Right? The Bible says he had pipes. Right? But it never said he led any choir. He had musical talent. Don't you sing? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now say this. Hallelujah. Sing it with. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Are you leading any choir? Are you leading any choir? No. Were you leading the choir just now? No. You were just singing, right? Because you have the musical talent in you. He had it. He was never leading any choir in heaven. See? But he was here in the earth as God's vice regent here. God placed him here in the earth to be in charge of the earth. That's another lesson. We have discussed that previously before. Adam was not the first man to be made. He was the first man that was created in God's own image and likeness. There were men that lived here in the earth. That Lucifer ruled over. God placed him to rule over them. That was the reason why when God was blessing Adam, he gave him dominion. Because there was a Lucifer. Because Lucifer has once tasted authority before. So God said, you know what? Give him dominion. Then I'll make this man in my own image. Because when Lucifer said he was going to exalt his throne above the... He never said it really. He never said it. The Bible says it was a thought he had in his heart. It was a thought again. You and your offering. What kind of thoughts do you know in your mind? You see that? So, Lucifer taught it in his heart that he was going to exalt his throne above the throne of the Most High. He called him the Most High, yet he said he was going to exalt his throne above the Most High. See the foolishness? He had already corrupted his wisdom. He never said it. In fairness to Lucifer, he never opened his mouth to say it. It was a thought he had in his heart. The Bible does tell us. It was a thought. And God brought him down. That is his anger. But it is a foolish anger. That's the point. It's so foolish. How can you be better than your maker? Like most of you, you want to be better, you can preach more than the man of God. You think so. How come God never graced you with the grace to do it? Most of you, you were apprentice under one person. You were serving someone. Somehow, some way, you felt you could do it better. You rebelled and left. And you think it will be well with you. You are operating with the spirit of Lucifer. Don't forget, the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. That worketh in the children of all. Disobedience. And most of you, you, you children, you don't even honor your parents. You frown at your parents when they talk to you. Who are you to be frowning at your father and your mother? Who are you? Who gave you the right? Because you're an American. Who made you an American? Your parents who traveled to America made you an American. Because they gave birth to you here. And you can look at your father in the eye or your mother in the eye and talk to them back. Because you say you are 18. 18. What do you know? What is 18? 
18. 18. So your father is afraid to talk to you because I don't want to. I will kill myself. Kill yourself. Oh, Lord. They should give you that knife. Kill yourself. Let's see. <laughs> so I'll kill myself. You, the parent, you are, now, you are now begging the child. Instead of casting out that devil, that's the spirit of Lucifer walking in the child. Disobedience. Yes. Your child will tell you that I will kill myself. Hmm. Kill yourself. Hmm. A pastor in New York called the police. Called the police. Invited them over. When they came, they said, what's the matter? He said, I want to flog this child. So he invited them. Say, I want you to be the witness so that you can arrest me. He beat the child. The police said, please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then you are coming to say, eh, eh, you know, Pastor Kre Dr. Krebutola once said something. He said, God never said you should be your child's friend. No. He said, be a parent. Now you are afraid. You as a parent. Because your child will be frowning at you. Frown. You say these African parents, these African parents. You are calling your father and your mother African parents. You know some people, you know, there are some people who don't learn. You see people like that, leave them. Those kind of children. If you don't want to correct them, leave them. Because they will soon marry. <laughs> they will soon marry. Yeah. By the time your child is smoking marijuana, you know they have legalized it now in California. Yeah. <laughs> what be tell you if you marry a man who takes you to California? Mm. And then you are married, your child is not smoking marijuana, blowing it on your face. He say, Mom, if you talk, I'll slap you. <laughs> <laughs> then you remember that you were 18. Yeah. Stupid. And you parents are encouraged it. You claim their indulgence to do it. You cannot talk to your child because your child will say, I'll leave home. Leave home. Let her go now. Ah, the prodigal son did he not leave home. Yes. The Bible says when he ended up eating with pigs, he was the one who came back to himself and said, Ah, I'm going back home. Bro. Don't worry. I always tell people, when you are hungry, you will come back home. Yeah. Oh Allah. You see hunger. You see hunger. You see, you can't. There is no healing of hunger. You don't yeah. pray for somebody to be healed of hunger. Yeah. Right? You can pray for somebody to be healed of cancer. True of us. True. You can't pray for somebody to be healed of hunger. You know hunger has a need. <laughs> and you know what to go and do to. to you don't need prayer. No. Your child. No. <laughs> it's not possible. No. My child can never tell me I'll leave him. <laughs> it is not possible. I'm telling you. Not with the kind of spirit that is here. I mean, listen, if your child ever. Listen, listen. Let, let's even talk to the young people here. Amen for a moment. Amen. Say amen. 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 Don't ever. Don't ever. Don't ever. Point to your parents and talk back to them. You may not agree with them, but there is a way to see it. We are not saying that they will always say things that don't make sense to you. They will not make sense to you. Because you are born here in America. They are born from where they are coming from. So they may not see things the way you see them. But never look at your parents and talk back to them. You have no right. You are not qualified. You have no right. You have no divine authority. Amen. Not even That does not even make you an American. It makes you a stupid person. Amen. It makes you a stupid person. Because not all, not all Americans are stupid. Obama's children cannot look at their father and talk no, to their father. No. Is it because your father is not a president? Mm. Because your father is still a security man. He's doing two jobs to sponsor you to college. And you are looking at your father in the eye to talk back to Or your mother in the eye. Who feeds you? How many babies have you raised? Have you ever paid the bills before you now frown at your parents? Don't let us hear it. If we hear it, if your parents should ever report you to us in this fellowship, you'll see what we'll do to you. Somebody say, what will I do? No, just try it. Just try it. <laughs> try it. Try it. Because you see, we, we, we cannot permit that kind of thing. Amen. We cannot at all. Amen. Not even in this fellowship. Amen. Amen. Your Amen. parents are, we, we see it, most of you. We, we, you know, sometimes we just laugh, we just keep quiet. Mm. Your parents are talking to you, you are frowning. Frowning? You're frowning at your parents? Because they said what you don't like. They said what you don't like. What you don't like. Yet they wake up and go out to go and walk because of you. You say they said what you don't like. Where did you get that kind of spirit from? It means, remember, it was Eve that gave birth to Cain. Yeah. It was the same Eve that gave birth to who? Abel, Abel. Abel. Abel right? Yeah. And the Bible says Cain was of what? The yeah. child of Satan. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you are probably the child of Satan. You must be a child of Satan to be frowning at your parents. You must be. 
And that is why your parents should cast out that devil from you. Amen. What is this by beating? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is permitted. Amen. Call the police. We'll show them from the Bible. The Bible says, spare the rod and do what? Spare the child. It's in the Bible. Yes. If you say you are 18, then go. When you are hungry, you do what? Come back. Come back. And please, parents, when they want to come back, welcome them. Amen. Do a party for them. Amen. Because they have come to themselves. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose I'm not doing any party. I'm not doing any party. Do a party, you. Don't let a boyfriend do party for them. Amen. But here's the point. Here. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Where did Cain get this anger from? That's the point. Where did he get this anger from? From his daddy, Satan. In John chapter 8, verses 44, Jesus said to the Jews, He said, You have your father, the devil. So the devil is a father of Saul. He says, you are of your father, the devil. John chapter 8, verses 44. He said, the lust of him you will do. He said, he was a liar from the beginning. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he says, he speaketh it of his own free will. It is in his nature to tell a lie. It is in his nature. And you get to see that Cain lied to Abel. We'll get to show you now. He led to Abel. So he was manifesting the nature of his father, Satan. So Adam was not his, his father. And brothers and sisters, you, when you read that story, when Cain killed Abel, Adam never queried Cain. Adam never did. Adam never did. Because Adam knew that was not his child. Because if you read Genesis chapter 5, from verses 1, and the Bible begins to tell you the genealogy of Adam. The Bible began with who? Began with who? Seth. Began with Seth. He didn't even mention Abel because Abel was killed. He didn't even mention who? Cain. 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 But Seth. it began with who? Seth. 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 Now notice something. The Bible says God said to Cain, why are you angry? And we knew where Cain got the anger from. But please, listen, follow this carefully. Please. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, now notice something. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? You see that? Yes. He said, If you do well, you'll be accepted. Yes. You see the point? It begins with you. God did not even talk about the offering. He said, If you do well, you'll be accepted. So the question is this Are you doing well? Who are you as a person? Who are you as a person? Who are you as a man? Who are you as a lady? He said, If you do well, you'll be accepted. So the Lord can choose not to accept you. And if he doesn't accept you, he cannot even accept your offering. He can't. He said, if you do well, you'll be accepted. If you do well, you'll be accepted. So it all boils down to you. You are the one to determine whether you want to make progress in your life or not. And stop querying the pastor that I've been painted in this church and things are not working in my life. It is you. Don't even talk that way is a proof that you are the problem. If, how come it is the man of God you are querying? Why don't you query yourself? Because other people are giving and they are sharing testimonies. Amen. So the problem is you. The Lord said to Cain, if you do well. Now, these are the two kinds of people you have in every church, in every fellowship. You have those who query why they don't make advancements financially. And you have those who make advancements. And the reason is that God has accepted who? One mm -hmm. and did not accept who and the other. Yeah. Now, was it the offering that he did not accept? No, no. he did not accept the person That's who it. even gave the offering. Yes. And the book you get to see later when you read down that the Bible says when the, when Cain killed his brother Abel and God called him a vagabond, the Bible says and Cain went out of the presence of the Lord. So you have them in church mm -hmm. because God's presence is where in the church. Yes. These are the two kinds of people you have in church: the Cains and the Abels. And the kings are always attacking the Abels. But you can choose to be the king. You may call yourself the Abel now. If you call yourself the Abel, it means that you'll be killed. You'll be persecuted. You'll be maligned. They will even tell you that you're sleeping with the pastor. They will even tell you you're having an affair with the man of God. They will even tell you that Brother Ozzy favors some people. He does not favor some people. You, they will talk that way. So which one are you? Are you the king or you want to be the Abel? And if you must be the Abel, you must be willing to be excellent in your person. Mm -hmm. Because the condition of your spirit will determine whether the Lord will accept your offering. It is not in the amount now. It is who? In the, the person. person. That's the point. 
It is in the person. First of all, has God accepted you? Say, yes, God has accepted me because I'm born again. Who told you? <laughs> if God has accepted you because you are born again, why are you not making progress? Why are you not making progress? Can't you see other people are overtaking you? Somebody who just joined church is, is making advancements, coming to share testimonies. Opportunities are opening unto him. You, you have been in this church. You are. You see, the problem in the church has always been old members. They know how the church started. We started this church. That's the way they talk. They are the kings. After all, king came before Abel. Two of us. We started this church. That's how you know the kings. We started this church. Wait, Pastor, I was the one who got this venue. Ah, if not for me, they won't, they won't be here now. That's how the kings talk. And then you expect when you talk that way, you expect the Lord to accept your offerings. I was the one who brought the house issues. <laughs> you are looking for church. <laughs> if not for me, brother, else wouldn't have been where he is. And when we hear people talk that, I just laugh. Look at this person. Let's tell you something to the glory of God. Say amen. 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 We say this with humility in the Holy Spirit. There are people who call us on the phone and tell us, please give us your account number. I want to send something to you. You know what we always do? We don't like to send. They sometimes they call. One, two, three. Sometimes at the third time, the Lord will say, give them your account number. You know why? So that we will let you know that we are not begging you for money. Mm -hmm. You understand? We are not, Ozzy is not desperate. The first phone call today that woke me up after our early morning prayers was somebody telling us, I've just paid some money to your account. Why? It is grace. Amen. Amen. But then, when we even pray for the person, we say, may God, for that reason to which you were stirred in your spirit to give, as long as that thing is good before God, it is granted you. Amen. That's what we said. Amen. Because you may, be, you may give an offering, and what you want the Lord to do for you may not be good before Him. Yes. So we said, as long as it is good before Him, then it is granted you. Amen. But the thing is this, you. Who are you? Let's tell you something. That's the reason why sometimes when we want to, before you give offerings, we always say, ask the love of forgiveness. But the question is this, must we be doing it every time that we meet? That's the point. Because of the kind of person you are. Must we be doing that? Because this is the reason why some Christians today don't make progress. Now, we were talking to the young people earlier. There's a reason why we said that. Because, you see, as a young person, even if you come to give an offering, God cannot collect that offering. You are the Bible says children. Let's say, let's say you, you see all those people, those children that they kill, they shoot, mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. in colleges and all that. They kill. Let's tell you why they die. Ephesians chapter 6. It says children obey the Lord. Your parents, right? Yes. Yes. In the Lord, right? Yes. For what? For, he said obey your parents where? In the law. Notice something. He said, obey your parents in what? In the law. Obey them. Which parents? Those that are in the law. He said, obey your parents in the law. Talking about your spiritual fathers. Spiritual mothers. Then he says, honor your father and your mother. He's talking about your biological parents now. There's a difference between parents and biological and father and mother. Obey your parents in the Lord, your spiritual authority. Then he says, honor your father and your mother. Then he says, this is the only commandment. This is the first commandment with what? With a promise. And what was the promise? He says, that your days may be long. So when you are frowning at your parents, you are shortening your lifespan. Listen, we have met people who wanted to marry. And when they came before us, we told them, don't marry this person. And you know why? Because that person is about to die. He will not live long. And we have told them, don't marry this person because you will soon be a widow. So keep frowning at your parents. Keep, keep attacking them. You won't live long. And if they ever bring a matter like that to us, we'll just tell you, it's, just, it's a disappointment. Don't let us hear it. Just don't let us hear it. That you can talk back to your parents. And then you now come to give an offering. To who? That's just a contribution. It will be better you use it to buy burger. Because he will not accept it. The law will not. Because it begins with you. The condition of your spirit. Now the question is, it is either you are a king in your family or you are the able. So you, a, a mother or a father and, a mother, and the mother can have three children in a house. One of them can be a king. And you can tell who is a king. Adam 
never queried Cain. Never did. Cain killed Abel. You, you will never read where Adam queried Cain. Adam knew Cain was the child of Satan. He knew. Because Adam, if he had queried Cain, Cain would probably kill him. Exactly. If you are a child that you, even your parents are not afraid of you, then something is terribly wrong with you. That means you have a big spiritual problem. God, is, God himself will be the one fighting you. <clears throat> well, the first time we did baptism in the fire congress service. after the baptism there's a sister her younger brother was there he didn't know we were behind him he was looking for something that belonged to him so he asked the elder sister Far, he's the last born in the family. The other sister is the first born in the family. So, and they have about four brothers in between who have gone to colleges. So you see the gap. Mm -hmm. And the brother, this last baby, was looking for what he was looking for. And he asked the sister, did you see it? Did you see it so, so, so? The sister said, oh, I saw it. I saw it at so, so place. Go and check there. Guess what he said to the sister? He said, why didn't you go and pick it for me? He didn't know. I said, are you stupid? I said, is your sister your mate? She told you where to find something. You are telling her, why didn't she? You are calling her. Why didn't you go and pick it? She just told you, instead of you to say thank you. Guess what? The mother and the father were there. You know the person we were talking about. The mother and the father. The mother said, what is it, brother? Um, oh, oh, he did that. Oh, you shouldn't do that now. You shouldn't do that. She yeah. was pampering the child. Yeah. She was an Eli. Mm -hmm. Eli pampering his sons for yeah. sleeping with the children yeah, of Israel. Sure. Who came to give God an offering? Yeah. She was pampering the children. And most of you parents, you do the same thing. You pamper your child. You want, instead of you correcting, rebuking your child, you say, don't do it now. You know God will not be angry with you. God will not be angry with you. God, or God will be angry with you. You know, uh, you know God, it, the Bible says, you are preaching the Bible says to your dad child. A king, you are preaching the Bible to a king. Mm. You think Cain did not know what is in the Bible? You see, many of these problems are caused by even the parents. Your child now has become too mature to be controlled. It's, listen, you cannot change an adult. Only the word of God can change, change an adult. adult. Yes. But as a child, you can change a child. Change the child. But you cannot change an adult. And most of you, you, your daughters don't know how to cook. You come for, for this Bible class. Your daughters don't even know how to cook. And then tomorrow they want to marry. Who will marry them? <laughs> so your mom, a man, a brother marries your daughter, a Christian sister in this fellowship. Mm -hmm. And then he will still go and be queuing up to buy Chinese. <laughs> Chinese. Say, so I only know how to bake. I'm good at baking. Baking. So the brother will be eating cake every day. <laughs> pasta. I can do Chinese pasta. I can do Indonesian pasta. Pasta. So you have become a pasta wife. <laughs> Somebody say, you know, brother, see, they can't handle fire for now. They can't handle fire. Mm -hmm. Why would they handle fire? Don't worry, when the husband becomes the fire, they will be able to handle the... The Bible says, look at verses 7. Let's quickly finish this. Amen. Amen. Listen, some of you, you might probably be offended. Oh, this is not a pastor. It's all right. It's okay. You see that? Yeah. And if you say you are not coming to the fire club, we know of people who, who have left this fellowship who said they will not come. Four miles somewhere, they still came again. And they'll be the one to call us to say, I left before. The Spirit of the Lord told me to come back. Say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord told you to come back. Amen. I mean, it's not my fellowship, it is his fellowship. Right? We can't chase you away. They report themselves. That's the thing. At the end of the day, they'll say, I was angry with you. I was angry with you. I say, Really? <laughs> what did you do? And you said what I didn't like. Uh, count not once, not twice, not even ten times. There are people who have told that. I don't like when you were preaching, you were preaching me. Mm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. But have you forgotten when we preach somebody else, you yeah. laughed? Yeah. Uh, now we are preaching you now, you are frowning. frowning. Why don't you laugh too? 
<laughs> when we preach somebody else, you laugh. You when laugh. we told you the person was angry, you say, why should the person get angry? Mm -hmm. Now we have preached you. You are frowning. Mm -hmm. I didn't like Bob Rossi, you should have told me privately. But when we were talking about the person publicly, mm -hmm. you were not angry. You laugh. Now because we talked about you publicly, you said we should have come to discuss you privately. Mm -hmm. Eve, you have become the Eve. The Eve. I've gotten a child from the Lord, but Abel is just <laughs> the one devil. <laughs> Verse 7 now. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! If you are not a king, shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, that guy is a great child. He's a great child. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. Now, verse 7. Verse 6 says, And the Lord came on, said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, now notice, he didn't say, Thou shalt not be accepted. But rather, he said, What? Sin lay it at where? At, at, at the door. door. And what? Unto, unto thee, unto shall, thee shall, shall be the desire of him. Right? Yes. He says, sin does what? Lie at, at the door. Mark that word sin there. Now, the word sin there, so many preachers have said that it meant that sin, he was going to fall into sin. No, his wrath alone said was already sin. You see the point? His anger that went into, that became offense was already sin. He said, be angry and do what? Sin not, right? Yeah. So now, his anger migrated from the level of anger into what? Offense. Which is, which is what you call what? Rot, right? So that was already sin. That was already sin. That was already sin. Now, you know what I mean. It's good to be angry, right? But not to be what? Offended, right? So, his offense was already what? Sin. His wrath was already sin. But now, the Bible says what? He's, he said what? What did the Bible say? In that, same, in that last verse we read. Sin lies at the door. Sin lies at what? At the door. What does it mean by sin lies at the door? What does it mean by sin lies at the door? What does it mean? When he says sin, sin lies at the door, he's not talking about sin in terms of conduct. That's not what he's talking about. When he says sin there, mm -hmm. he's talking about a lamb. Lamb, L A M B, sheep. Mm -hmm. So when he says sin light there, he's talking about an animal. Mm -hmm. Now, who was in charge of the sheep? Abel. Who was in charge of the sheep? Abel. Answer now, who was in charge of the sheep? Abel. And Abel's sheep, mm -hmm. one of them came to meet who? Cain. For what reason? For the offering. No, he was a farmer. He was supposed to offer that sheep oh, okay. as what? As a sin offering. He said the desires of it. He said you shall rule over, you shall be the master of the desires of it, right? Mm -hmm. He said sin, light at the door. That sin there refers to sheep. For what? For a sin offering. So the first person who ought to have given God a sin offering was who? Cain. Okay. But he didn't. He offered his brother instead. Okay. Instead of offering the sheep, he offered the shepherd. So in a sense, Cain killed Jesus. Because Jesus is the shepherd. Okay. Instead of offering the sheep. So Cain was the first person to even kill Jesus. Because he killed Abel. And the Bible says Abel was a prophet. And Jesus came as a prophet and as a messiah. Even though he functioned in all the fivefold ministry gifts. But Jesus said in John chapter 10, he said what? I am what? The shepherd. And Cain, the Bible says, was the keeper of the sheep. Which means what? He was a shepherd. Instead of offering the sheep, he offered the shepherd. So as far as Cain was concerned, God requested for an offering. He killed the shepherd. Because in Exodus chapter 10, I think Exodus chapter 10, in Exodus chapter 29, verses 14, does tell you something about the sin offering. And the Bible also in Leviticus chapter 4, verses 3, we may not have the time, does tell you also about what? The sin offering. 
So there is an offering for sin. So when the Lord said to Cain, sin lies at the door. That sin there was the offering. There was a sheep that came from Abel. It's amazing God made provision for Cain to redeem him. So when the Lord had no respect for Cain before his offering, God still wanted to help Cain out. Mm -hmm. so, that, so God still intended to receive of that offering. But this time around, Cain was going to give how many offerings? Two now. Mm -hmm. He did it. He felt that what he was giving God was enough. That's the problem you have to as a Christian. You always think, when, it's, when you come to church, you even squeeze, you say, please, do you have, hey, do you have change? Do you have change? Mm. Change. 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 What do you want to do with change? Hey, I want to use it for offering. Change. Mm. You want to give God change. Mm. So, I don't have any change. Change. Mm. An offering has now become what? Change. A change. Instead of a sheep, you offer the shepherd. See, an offering has now become what? The change. change. So they give you, somebody says, oh, I have $2 there. So you went to pack $2. Thank you. Ah. Change. It's amazing that $20 is too small at McDonald's. But in church, it is too big to give to God. $20 is too small to spend at McDonald's. But in church, it is too big to offer to God as an offering. Is it not amazing? It's amazing you spend $40 for your gas, for your car, but you can't give $40 as an offering in church. It is too big for God. Then you expect God to prosper you. You expect God to prosper you. You spend $925 to pay your rent, but you can't give that as an offering in church. You went to buy a car worth $25,000. And you are doing financing. How much? Maybe $200 every day. Every month. But you have never given $200 as an offering. Is it not amazing? That you can give to yourself what you have never given to God. Yet the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You have never given $25,000 to God. You are giving $25,000 to a man who is selling you a machine called a car. The car that will still kill you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That car. That car that will still drive you to the hole. That car that the police will still give you a ticket on. Mm -hmm. Several tickets. Every kilometer, police. <laughs> pa, pa, ticket. Pa, pa, ticket. Every day. You are calling Brother Ozzy for prayers. But yeah, when you come to church, you give change to God. Is it not amazing? You send your child to the best school. How much is this school worth? But you have never sponsored a program even in your church. Mm. To say, Pastor, I want to give $2,000 for this. It's, it's funny. We think that God is interested in the offering. It is you. The Bible says where a man treasure is, there will what? His heart be also. So if I can give $2,000 in church as an offering, it does mean that my heart is there. Because I will see to it that the church will not fall. Yes. I will see to it that I will, I will see to it that that money is spent judiciously for the purpose of which it was given. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that I have to be the po police of the pastor to say, Pastor, what did you do with this 2000 No, 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 no. It just means that I'm part of the family. Yes. Many people are not part of the church family. They operate from a distance. That's why they can take change and go and give to God. They think they are doing the pastor a favor. So some people think when they stop coming to church, the church will fall. Yeah. Have you not noticed? Ever since you left, the church is still standing. Yeah. More people still came. The pastor is now riding a Land Rover. Mm -hmm. When you were there in the church, the pastor was driving Beetle. So it was, it was a beautiful testimony that you left church. <laughs> because you were the Cain who almost killed the Abel, the pastor. So God had to take you out before you kill another Cain, Abel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so there are so many Cains in church today. Mm. More than the Abels. Because they have killed all the Abels. They even tell you, why are you paying tight? Can't you see Pastor? Pastor just moved now from, from West Orange to Bird Lake, where Sister Patience live. And only rich people live there. Hey, this and that. Say, ah, it's true. It's true. I'll stop paying tight. Guess what? The pastor himself, the person who told you, still pays tight. Mm -hmm. But you stop paying tight. He has just, you are the Abel that has just been killed by a king. Because Abel never gave God any offering again. God still made provisions for King to still give him an offering. 
Abel never gave any go never gave God any offering again because he didn't have the opportunity to. He was killed by a king. Mm. Only God knows how many people you have destroyed with this your beautiful mother, you put lip sick. Yes, Then when we say Cain killed Abel, we say, ah, oh, Cain, Cain is a bad person. Cain, Cain is a child of Satan. Are you different? Are you different? Come to church. I don't feel like going to church today. Is it by feeling? I don't feel like going today. You know, I don't feel. I, I don't want to come to the Bible class today. You know, but I also always make us laugh. I don't want to laugh today. I just, I just want to keep to myself. You want to keep to yourself. <laughs> then imagine if you marry a king for your husband. And he's wanting church, 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 church. And he's wanting you give, 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 give. You marry that kind of person for your husband. Listen, if you are even probably dating somebody you want to marry, who queries what you do in the house of God, leave him alone. He will kill you Amen. because he's a king Amen. that's about to slaughter you. Amen. And you say you love him. You love a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> How many scapegoats do you want God to have? You already had Jesus as a scapegoat that was slaughtered. Mm -hmm. You want to be the next. Okay, so our time is up, right? Amen. Okay, so let's take five minutes, right? Five more minutes. Amen. Thank you for our time, keeper. Even us the signals. Amen. Amen. He says, sin lied at the door. Sin. Sin lied at your door. Sin awaits you at your door. In other words, God created a remedy for him. To still make up. But he did it. And when you read the next line, the Bible says what? What did the Bible say? And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Yeah. Right? Yes. Now look at verses 8. And Cain did what? Cain talked with And Cain did what? Cain talked. Say it again. Cain did what? Talk, talk with, with Abel. Cain did what? Cain talked with Abel. Read that line. Cain did what? Talk with Abel, his what? His brother. Say it again. And Cain did what? Talk with Abel, his brother. Again. Cain did what? Talk with Abel, his brother. What did he talk with Abel about? What did he say to him? Go Let's go out to the field. Is that what you think? No. Talk about the offering. What do you think he talked about? It was, it was about the offering. It was about what the Lord told him to do. Because the Lord told him, the sin, sheep, lied at the door. So before, and Abel was the keeper of the sheep. So before he could take the sheep, he needed to inform Abel. So he went to talk to Abel. Because don't forget, Abel, Abel was the keeper of the sheep. And if Abel was going to keep the sheep, he would take them to where? To the field. So that the sheep would do what? Will find pasture in the field. True of us. True. So he talked with Abel. When you read the message Bible, the message Bible, the message Bible does tell us he had discussions with Abel. He had a discussion with Abel. So it was a discussion. And Abel was willing to give him the sheep. Ask Abel, your brother, to give you a sheep. He, was, he discussed it with Abel. When he met Abel in the field, he killed Abel in his death. And guess what? He buried him. He killed his own brother and buried him. Where did he get that kind of nature from? Lucifer. Not from even Adam. Because Adam could have killed... Adam never killed Eve. Eve, did he? Yeah. Even though Eve committed... Adultery. Eve committed adultery with the serpent. And Adam never killed Eve. That's how, that's how Cain, the seed of Cain, came into her. That's how the seed of Cain came into her. So when you read when she said, the Lord and uh, the serpent beguiled me, the word beguiled there in the Hebrew means defied me. How do you defy someone? Satan was the one who introduced sex to Eve. Through the serpent now. Because this knowledge has come. The knowledge of what? Good and evil. So. In Malachi chapter 3. The conclusion of the matter. From verses 3 and verses 4. What did the Lord say? He said he will sit as the refiner fire. And do what? And pour you. That you may do what? Give him a word. An offering. Mm -hmm. In what? In, in righteousness. righteousness. So he will put you first before you bring him an offering. Like he's doing now. 
So if you are willing to be post, then the Lord can accept of your offerings. Amen. Then He will prosper you. Because in verses 4 of Malachi chapter 3, He says, Then your offering shall be pleasant unto me. He says. Then the Lord now says, As in the days of old, and as in the former years. Then the Lord now says in verses 5, I will come near to you to judgment and be a swift witness against adultery. So nobody will steal your husband. No strange woman will come and take your husband. So a woman who is suffering that problem, that a, a husband is running after another woman, is because you are the problem. You the woman, not your husband. So if your wife is running, seeing another man in a... You know, <laughs> we have heard so, some funny reports. We don't know how far that is true. But we heard that nurses are the most adulterous set of people. <laughs> they said it. I, I will tell you what, no, we are not saying we... They told us. People gave us reports. They say because they are always doing overtime, right? Mm -hmm. Always working, doing overtime. So they meet each other at work. A husband who is also doing overtime in, as a doctor. A husband of another sister who is a nurse <laughs> or is a doctor. He's doing overtime at work. You, the wife of somebody else, you are doing overtime. Who do you spend time with? The doctor. And psychology says nearest is dearest. <laughs> True of us. <laughs> You are not asking now, two of us. True. Yeah. True now. Nearest is dearest. Yes. It's a song. Yes. It's simple as it's that. It's a song like that. Nearest is dearest. <laughs> Your husband hardly sees you. Doctor sees you. He sends you an error. You say, yes, doctor. Yes, nurse. Have you? Yeah. When the husband comes, hello, hello, hello. Darling, I need to rest. You go and sleep. You wake up again. Ah, I need to go work. Go to work. You meet doctor again. You spend, how many hours do we have in a day? 24 hours, right? How many hours do you spend with doctor? 12 hours. Eh? 12 hours. You spend 12 hours, right? Sister Nelly, how many hours? 16. Hey, that's 16. Some 16. So why do you think you will not have an affair with doctor? Doctor spends 16 hours at work. You also spend 16. You see each other every day. Nearest is dearest. <laughs> After all, this is the, you see, you need to be honest. After all, your husband did not know. Your husband cannot know. After all, you are a medical doctor. And you are a medical person. So you know what to do to your body. So your husband will not know. So you will go and take your bath and come back home. Darling, I'm very tired. You are very tired. 16 hours. Carry back again. You, go. you know the things you do. Then you expect to come to church on Sunday. You tie that lovely gilly. And then you say, Dance and celebrate. Dance and celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, then you come and give up. Then God is saying, Sister, <laughs> Sister. <laughs> then you come and say, Pastor, I want to do counseling. Pastor, there's this job I applied for. I want them to give me that job. Pastor, if they give me that job, eh, I will change, I will buy a seat for this church. Pastor will say, Amen. Pastor will say, In the name of Jesus, they must give me that job. <laughs> Pastor is praying, praying you out of your marriage again. So 16 hours in one place, you are doing another second job again. Husband does not see you anymore. Then you are not angry when you heard that your husband impregnated one small lady. Why are you angry? Have you forgotten what you do too with the patient and the doctor? 16 hours. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know this is not a church, right? Yes. It's a fellowship, right? Yes. Where we all congress, right? Yes. And have what? Fellowship, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So if we cannot talk to ourselves, we'll be deceiving ourselves. True yeah, of us. That's true. The Bible says, let every man do what? Examine, Examine himself. himself. You know the things you do. You know. You know the things you do. Okay, so we say, I know my pastor, I, sorry, I know my doctor is making passes at me, but I refuse. I, I'm still holding myself. You're still holding yourself. It's a matter of time. You know, consistency. Mm. There is power in consistency. Yes. He, will, he will be, and there is power in consistency and persistence. He will tell you, I like you. This is your, you know, have our phone. Come on, we're always together. He will, he will. You think that, listen, do you think that when the serpent met Eve, he, it was a one time talk? No, do you think so? Go well, and read that Bible very well. It was not a one-time discussion. He said the serpent was what? More oh, subtle. Yes. More clever. What does that tell you? <laughs> that is not the first time. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is telling us that the serpent was what? More clever. clever. So that's not the first time. So it, it was a long discussion. It was a discussion. Adam never discussed with... Adam never spoke to his wife until... Until what? When the woman 
give. In fact, the woman did not even speak to Adam. Because Adam never spoke to her. When the Lord queried Adam, he said, the woman you give me, beguide me. Adam did not, there was no place in the Bible where you read that Adam spoke to the woman. He didn't have any discussion with the woman. Yet he called her a wife. <laughs> Most of you, you walk. Your husbands are with you. How often do you even call your husband on the phone to say, how are you? How is work going? Someone say, ah, my husband. He will tell me what is wrong with me, sir. He will tell me, am I okay? <laughs> Some of you, you, you know it. Even the other will say, what is me not that? What, why are you asking me? I'm, am I doing? Some of you, you know. If you call your husband and say, ah, honey, I just wanted to know how you are doing. The will say, what is me not that? We just left home now. Didn't, didn't you see me do <laughs> And I don't know why the man should be angry. Because the wife said, I just want to know. So the, because of that, the woman does not even ask him at all. How are you doing? The woman does not consider it necessary. She does not want to be insulted. Guess what? She rather calls Brother Felix. Oh, no, not Brother Felix. Brother <laughs> Joe. <laughs> All right, let's close. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Is that your Holy Spirit? This brother Felix, we love him too much. <laughs> no, it's not our Felix, it's someone else. We love him too much. No, but you know some sisters do that. They will just call one brother. They will say, I just want to call you. I just wanted to call you. A married sister calling another brother. A married brother. I just want to call you. Ah, how is everything? How is the family? Hope everything is okay. You cross my mind. Hmm? <laughs> you cross my mind. Sister, I, I crossed my mind. I was yes, I was praying. Then the Lord laid it in my heart that I should call you to know how you are doing. <laughs> Sister, <laughs> how come it was your husband that the Lord did not lay in your heart? Yeah. Mm. Ah, brother Lloyd, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I All right, let's go. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Let's your feet now. Let's bless yes. the name of the Lord. <laughs> Have you been blessed? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Say Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. He has done me well. Take your seats now. Uh, we're going to pray. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you, you probably may have been guilty of some of these things. Maybe you have been dishonorable to your parents. You have dishonored your parents in many ways. You need to talk to the Lord now so that the Lord can accept you Amen. as his child. Otherwise, you'll still remain a king. And please, like we said, don't ever let anything push you to talk to your parents anyhow. You are not permitted. You don't have that divine right. You may not like what they have said, just be calm. Okay, come and report it to us. Come and say, brother, I want to talk to you. My mother said this and I didn't like it. You yourself, you should even question yourself that you want to even go and report to your mother or your father. You should be ashamed of that. Because don't forget, you will still be a parent someday too. Right? Jesus said, give and it shall be what? Give Giving unto you. you. Good, Good measure. measure. Press, Press down and, and shaking together. together. And, running over. and running over. right? Shall men do what? Give, give unto your bosom. bosom. Now, notice he didn't talk about what to give. He didn't say if you <laughs> give anything. So whatever you give. So if you give disobedience to your parents, men will give it to you in what? In good, good, good measure. measure. Press <laughs> down. Shaking, shaking together and running over. Running over. So if you insult them, that's what men will do to you. Amen. 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 So if you tell your parents you are 18, you know what God will do? He will give you a good measure. He will allow you to have twins so that you can have two 18s. <laughs> at, the know, at the same time. That will, that will be firing you on this side and the other side. <laughs> and you don't want that. 
You don't want that. Say not me. Not me, Lord. Say I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Amen. Amen. So now, if you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit and talk to the Lord. And even you as a parent, you know some of the things you have done even in your place of work. You have some of you cannot deny the fact that you have not admired a brother from a distance, even though you are a married woman. It was bad though. But, but <laughs> the Bible says, do what? Examine yes. your what? Yes. 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 So look at examine yourself now and talk to the Lord. You can buy your somebody, maybe you don't want somebody to hear what you are saying. You can do like this. Lord. <laughs> but talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. So that the Lord can prosper you. This year is a year of increased opportunities. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. By your spirit. Have mercy upon us. By your eternal spirit. Have mercy upon us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of you prayed? Amen. 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 And for the young people to prove that you are really repentant, meet your parents and tell them, I'm sorry, I will not behave that way again. So that the Lord can bless you. Amen. 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 So that the Lord can bless you. And let's tell you something. When you repent of anything you do wrong, you know what the Lord says you should do? You give a tithe on it. Your tithe, you pay a tithe on it. Your tithe is there in the book of Malachi. The Lord said repent and then bring the tithe. So when you repent, the proof of your repentance is your tithe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you offended? No. Do you still love Brother Ozzy? Yes. Amen. 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 You must love Brother Ozzy by force. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> by fire, by thunder. Absolutely. You must love Brother Ozzy by force. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. All right, we're going to give our offerings now. Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay. okay. All right. How many of you are new here? Amen. You are new in our midst, right? If you are new in our midst, I don't think. So. I, I don't. Okay. Oh, we have a new person. Come, let's pray for you, sister. Amen. Let's clap for her. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Even as we have studied your word and you have revealed secrets to us, telling us about us and our offerings. Thank you, Father, for renewing the right spirit within us. And thank you, Father, from this day forward, you will never reject our offerings. Amen. Oh, God. Because your eternal spirit, the Holy Ghost, who dwells in us, sanctifies our offerings. Amen. And sanctifies our spirit. Amen. And oh, God, most importantly, your love for us, oh, God, will take us to the next level. Amen. And we thank you, my Father, for your grace and your peace, your strength and your kindness. Lord, may these ones live better than the way they came. And oh God, even as they go, they shall surely testify Amen. to the glory of your name and for your holy name's sake. Their financial life will never remain the same anymore. Amen. Men shall even accuse them for doing rituals, not knowing that they have had an encounter with divinity and with the prophet by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, to you be all glory, majesty, and dominion. Unto the King eternal. Say it. Unto the King eternal. Unto the King eternal. Immortal. Immortal. Invisible. Invisible. The only wise God. The only wise God. The glory and honor. The glory and honor. Majesty and power. Majesty and dominion. And dominion. He has cried unto your holy name. In Jesus' name. Put your right hand on your chest. Say, I was born, I was born to, be to be your dwelling place. Your dwelling place. Oh, God. oh God, a home, a home. For, the glory for the glory of the Lord. Of the Lord. So, let so let my life now be, now be separated unto you, separated that, I be that I may be what I was born to be. Born to be. Amen. Your two hands on your head. I have a good head. My head is blessed. My head is wearing my crown. Because angels are fighting for me. My head will never be used for any satanic manipulation. Now hit your head. Say you this beautiful head. You are leading me to God's divine destiny for my life. You this head. You this head. You are leading me. You are leading me to God's divine destiny for my life. For my life. And I'll fulfill my calling without reproach. Without reproach. Because all I require for life and success 
Victory and increase. Wealth and favor. Power and majesty. God has given me. To the glory of his name. And for his holy name's sake. Jesus' name. For glory and grace. You are dismissed. Thank you.